Hello, welcome to my floss tube. My name is Amy. I go by Fiber Arts Amy here and on Instagram. Uh, this is floss tube number three. Uh, I thought today I would, um, I've said I'm, I'm going to kind of do like a tour here of my house of completed stitching. So I thought today I would um, show you the pieces that are in our master bedroom which is where I am now. Our, our house is full of books, so I'm sitting in front of some bookshelves. Um, I just needed to sit somewhere where there was space to like lay everything out. So I wanted to show you the, um, the completed cross-stitch pieces that I have um, in our master bedroom. And I also wanted to show you things um, that I've worked on here in the last few weeks and made some progress on. I actually finished a couple of small projects and um, I, I've mentioned that I keep um, different whips in different areas like my primary stitching spot is where I filmed last week that's where most of my stitching happens um, so a lot of my whips are kept there but some of my whips are also kept up here in the bedroom um, now things like move they migrate so <laughs> Something that's kept up in the bedroom, um, you know, this week might be downstairs next week. They they can move around um, depending on how much I'm working on them or when I'm feeling like working on them. Um, but I do have a lot up here. Um, last year, I didn't used to have a lot of stitching in my bedroom, but um, last school year, my children were home most of the time for school. And uh, my kids are young. They're, we're all elementary school aged. And the way we made that work is that they each did school, because they're in different classes, they each did school from their bedrooms um, at their desks. And I stayed in my bedroom and basically was on call all day. So a lot of stitching piled up in my bedroom. Um, it's where a lot of things are stored too in the furniture, but um, there were a lot of things that I just kept at hand so that I could keep myself you know, entertained and occupied in between helping my kids. I couldn't really do a lot of like jobs around the house or anything because I kind of needed to be there and, and be on call for them. Um, my, my daughter especially was still very much in that phase of like, I can't find it. <laughs> you know, like teacher wanting them to pull out a worksheet and they, she has no idea where it is. Um, so there was a lot of like helping with that. Um, so it was kind of like, I, I didn't get any big chunks of stitching time while they were in school, but I might like put 10 stitches in and then be helping my kids for 20 minutes and then put another 30 stitches in and then helping somebody with something for 10 minutes, you know, just like back and forth. Um, so anyway, I'm going to show you what's here in our bedroom. Um, and also at, I guess at the end, I also want to share about a little bit of like haul stuff and like a, a planned project that I have that I'm pretty excited about. Okay. So I'm going to get started. Um, and when I do know, you know, chart names and years and fabric and that sort of thing, I, I will share that. I don't, I didn't like keep records, so I don't always know that. Um, so this, we, I think I've said we love Halloween in this house. This was um, a hindsight piece, and I believe these are called K's Frames, I think was the company that did these, but I haven't seen them recently, even when I've gone searching, so I don't think they're still being made. Um, I did this in 2007 because I did date it, so I can tell there. Um, but I just, I love these. These were for me like a fun, relatively quick stitch and finish and an enjoyable thing to do. I loved the cute frames. Um, I know I've shown some before. Um, in my other floss tubes, they were just really enjoyable. I did always um, take them to a professional framer and have them frame them and, and put them behind glass. So sorry about the, the glare. It's always a challenge to figure out where to put things as I'm done with them so they don't all fall over. Um, so this was a piece that I did. Sorry all that glare. Um, I know this was just DMC. And I know that this was a crossed wing collection fabric. Um, I don't remember the name of the company. And I looked for some of my pamphlets from them. I'm going to keep looking. I couldn't find anything. 
they put out, this company put out, um, like packets. It were collections of like fantasy and like medieval themed like plants and animals. And you'd buy like a packet, I don't know, for like 15 or $20 or something. And it would have dozens of like, the, you know, the relatively small and simple patterns. But I've done several of these did them back in the day. These were kind of like quick, easy finishes for us. This hangs in our bathroom. I have cross stitch in the bathroom because there's wall space <laughs> in there. So I hang things, I hang our cross stitch up in there. I know some people are kind of horrified by that idea, but um, ah, goes in the bathroom. Ooh. So this, <laughs> this is one of the first pieces I ever did. This was Dimensions, this was a Dimensions kit of some sort. I don't know the name or, or anything. Um, I also, I think you'll probably be getting used to this by now if you watch my other videos. <laughs> Earlier in my stitching days, and this was one of the first pieces I ever did, um, I wasn't real confident with my ability to finish things, to like stick with them to the end, because this took so long <laughs> to stitch. So I would often like not stitch an entire piece, <laughs> like leaving flowers or wings off of Mirabilia, that sort of thing. Um, similar thing I did here. So this was an oval piece, but that you were supposed to stitch black in the corners to make it like a rectangle. And I think there might have been like, like floral bouquets, like really simple flowers that were put in the corners or something. Um, I didn't do that. <laughs> I had found this black oval mat. I basically just stitched enough black to make it like blend into the mat. And this I did frame myself very badly. It's like, I don't even show you the back. It's just a mess. I like looped wire to like keep it in there. But it's been hanging on the wall for 15 years or so. So I guess it's hung together well enough. But I like this. My husband and I just particularly like Tudor Tudor architecture and Tudor style homes and we um, like back in the we lived in apartments for years as we moved around for college and various graduate school programs and things and you used to like drive around and and just like fantasy shop like looking at houses and things and um, we used to live in the south and where there's all these amazing homes and small towns all over the place they're just gorgeous anyway we just used to like, whenever we found a tutor, we were so excited. So I, um, this was, we were still living in an apartment and I really wanted to stitch a little tutor cottage for us so that we'd have our own little, little tutor cottage, even if we couldn't live in it. Um, this piece also would have been stitched. Oh, I hate the glare. I'm sorry. Some of my leader pieces have like non glare glass. It's a little bit easier, but, um, this is one of those pieces that was um, designed by that company, again, that I can't find the name of, where they produce packets of, like, animals and things. I don't know if any of you know. If you know what I'm talking about, please, in the comments, say who it is, because I couldn't find it. I know I have their packets around here in my house somewhere, but I couldn't find one. Um, so, yeah, this is just a unicorn. Um, again, this was, like, a... I'd been working on Mirabilia's and wanted something really quick and easy to stitch kind of thing, but I love the way it turned out. Although, so I've used a number of different framers over the years, and I don't, I don't know if you're going to be able to see. Oh, you can't really see. So, framers, when they're, when you've got a good, a really good framer, um, they will adjust the color of the board that they mount something on to, um, to go well with your fabric. Um, and I was, this when I got this framed, it was with a framer who was new to me and um, didn't end up being my favorite framer. I was very used to all the framers I'd had in the past. Like if I had a dark fabric, they would use a black or a dark board underneath. If I was light fabric, they'd use a white or like a cream board. Um, and I know that you can do all kinds of them. I mean, you can even like mount another piece of fabric underneath you know, to, to get an effect even if you want to. Anyway, this framer happened to put white underneath. In person, this kind of looks awful. You can see, because it's a navy blue, it's just a plain navy blue linen. 
but you can see the white from the backing board. You can see it through the holes in the fabric, and it looks pretty bad. Um, so for any of you, if you want a framing tip, if you haven't done a lot of framing, if you, especially if you use a dark fabric, because I think the default for framers is usually to use like a white or a cream colored board, um, you might want to like check with them to see what they're going to mount behind your piece. Um, because if it shows through the holes, it can really affect the look of the piece. Um, okay, so this one is a Nor Corbett. This is Sunflower Fairy, and I absolutely love this one. So this was published, I believe, originally in a magazine, and that's where I stitched it from, was from the um, magazine pattern. But I know some are from magazine patterns. You can get now, I want to say maybe on Hirschner's or something, you can um, you could download that and stitch from. So keep that in mind. That's, you know, if you're, if you're looking for this, you don't necessarily need to hunt down the original magazine. I don't even remember which one it was in. Um, I finished this in 2020, um, although I know I started it long before that. Um, I did stitch this using the Valdani threads. I think I found somebody on Etsy who was selling like the thread pack for it. So it just came with all of them because she's charted basically entirely in Valdani's. Um, her wings are done in Krynic. I'm not sure if I use the called for Krynic or if I use something else though, to be honest. I think I use the called for, but I'm not positive. I know the beads, I did not use the called for beads. I have so many like partial packs of beads <laughs> left over from other projects in this house and this called, this needed so few beads. I just grabbed some beads that I thought I would like the look of and, um, and added them. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the Valdani and over dyed threads, I guess, in general here. Because I do something that, from what I can tell, is very unusual, but it's something that I prefer. I like the way I do it. Um, you will hear people all the time, <laughs> I even heard a floss tuber saying it yesterday, that you have to stitch with an over dyed thread. You can't do a loop start. You can't. You have to do, um, you know, you have to do two strands in stitch one X at a time if you want. Well, they say, a lot of people say that's how you're supposed to do it. That is obviously how you need to do it if you want to maximize the color shift. I, in most situations, do not like maximizing the color shift on over dyed threads. Now, there are exceptions, but generally, I don't like that look. I don't like the way it looks if you go down and back. I don't like the way it looks if you do each X one at a time. I don't like it. it um, it's not the worst. It's not awful, but it's not, it's not my preference. I don't, it's just not my, it's not what, the way I usually like to, to see things. What I, what I really like is a more blended kind of tweedy look to pieces. Um, so what I do is still use one strand of floss and double it and do a loop start. And when you do that, typically you're going to get, um, well, for example, so like down here, this was a floss color that had like yellows and oranges in it. If I had, um, if I had used two separate strands, I that flower would have much, like the orange sections would be much more bold and the yellow sections much more bold. I didn't want to do that. I wanted it to look more blended. And um, I mean, you know, I've, I've said in my other floss tubes, obviously I love Teresa Wensler. It gives more of like a blended floss, Teresa wensler -y look to things, um, which I really like if you still use just one strand and do a loop start. Um, like these leaves up here, I just think they look more subtle 
and you can still see variation like this is one color here you can still see the variegation from the, the flosses like in in I think each of these but it's m way more subtle and for me that's usually the look that I prefer so that's why I've done it that way um, and that's almost always how I do it those of you who don't like that look and you want you know to maximize the variegation and do two strands held together I mean obviously go for it you know do you do you um, it just makes me cringe when I hear people say that you're not supposed to do a loop start with a variegated thread and like double your floss because I can't be the only one who likes the way it looks better <laughs> to do that um, there's got to be people out there so if any of you out there have been you know hearing about different ways to handle variegated flosses and um, you're not sure what you should be doing or you can do what you want <laughs> pick pick what works best for you what you like the look of and and do it that way and um, and be happy with it don't let other people tell you that you're doing it wrong sorry I'll get off my soapbox um, this is another piece that's hanging oh that glare is awful this is another piece that's hanging in my um, it's in my bathroom um, I I'm not sure who designed this it's on just a plain linen like kind of a tealy linen background like tealy blue they're seasonal unicorns it might be that same company that I was talking about that did all the like packets of simple patterns but I'm not sure these were just seasonal unicorns um, and I know I did basically as like a break from oh, some of the more intense stitching that I'd been working on um, and I was kind of just playing around with some different flosses this was this would have been stitched prior to 2008 um, so it was one of the earlier pieces I did and I use glow-in-the-dark floss I just wanted to see what it would be like and I didn't have like another good pattern at the time to like use it on so this was like DMC glow-in-the-dark floss which I kind of I remember being really splitty and I hated working with um, but now these unicorns like if you get up in the night to go to the bathroom they'll glow <laughs> <laughs> and it's just kind of funny that I have these four I think it's funny <laughs> I have four glowing unicorns in my bathroom I enjoyed that one it was a simple quick stitch but it was fun and the floss glows like really well it's so thin that like you'd think or at least I thought that it couldn't possibly like give off that much light or that it might be kind of like blurry or hard to see it's not it's like it glows you can really see it um, which one is this? Oh, this is a fairy. This was, this is done on a picture, this plus opalescent linen, but I don't know which opalescent linen it was. Um, also no idea who designed this. This was done like prior to 2008. I kind of want to say that I got this pattern off patterns online but I'm not sure and we haven't had a computer that can handle patterns online their format like you can't download to a Mac um, or to any sort of like Android device or anything um, like you have to have like a PC and we haven't had one of those in so long um, so I can't I can't even access those files anymore I want to say I got this off patterns online but I'm not sure about that this was years ago but I was very proud of this piece because this was before I had children my husband and um, my husband went away for the weekend with a friend and I stitched this whole thing in a weekend <laughs> now it would take me weeks if not months to do this much stitching I did the whole thing in a weekend it was fabulous it was it was so nice um, so this piece has some good relaxing memories for me um, and I love fairies obviously so that's that's why I was drawn to it um, all right this one is a dragon dreams um, it's probably my favorite 
Dragon Dreams piece. This also um, was the first time I used over-dyed floss. The, um, the castle up here, the like reddish pink is an over-dyed, I don't remember what, um, but it is an over-dyed floss. So yeah, this was Dragon Dreams. Um, I believe it's called Castle Sampler. There was an alphabet charted to go underneath that I did not stitch. Um, but this has, even through all of our moves, this has always lived in our bedroom, wherever we are. Um, I just love this piece. I love the little dragon and the knight and the princess. This is just like perfect dragon dreams um, stitching for me. I really love that. Um, I'm almost done. This one, okay, so this next one actually lives right outside our bedroom door in the hallway and it's the only one I have up here today that um, I did not stitch. This one my mother stitched. It's um, a lavender and lace piece. I do not remember the name of it. I want to say it's like mother's love or something but I'm not sure. Um, so yeah my mom stitched this for me. It looks like it's on like just a plain natural linen. Um, it's beautiful. I love it. Um, I found though that pieces like this are complicated. If, um, maybe your relationship with a person who stitched it for you is complicated, it can make your relationship to the piece complicated. Um, but I do love, I mean, as, as, I love lavender and lace. It's one of, I think they're more beautiful or her Marilyn Levitt emblems more beautiful designs. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it was certainly nice of my mother to do this for me, but, um, it hung in, um, what we would call the nursery, the bedroom where we, we kept the youngest child, um, until last summer when we redid my daughter's room and she said she didn't really need it in there anymore. Um, and because my relationship with my mother is perhaps complicated, um, I love the piece, certainly. I'm happy to have it, but I didn't, um, there wasn't a good option for where to hang it because obviously, well, maybe obviously, every time I look at it, I think about my mother. And maybe I don't want to always <laughs> be thinking about my mother. So um, it's in the hallway. And, um, at least for the time being, that's a good spot for it. And, uh, I don't know, we'll see, probably pass it on to, to my daughter or one of my, one of my kids one day. I'm going to manage to balance it so it doesn't fall over. I have a big crash in the middle of filming this. Um, you can already see it. So this is one I stitched. This is... Um, April's Blue Diamond. Um, wow, that non-glare ga glass really helps. Um, I, especially for my bigger pieces, always choose the museum glass now. And um, this is just much easier to show on camera compared to those earlier ones. So this is Marabilia's April's Blue Diamond. And I love her. She, uh, she's just gorgeous. I'm so glad I finally picked her up and finished her. She, um, so I started her, it would have been back prior to 2008. Um, I only finished her, I actually finished her in early March of 2020 because <laughs> I had just dropped her, I actually dropped her and Sunflower Fairy, Nora Corbett Sunflower Fairy. I had dropped them off at the framer the second week in March, I believe, and didn't get her back for months because everything went then shut down <laughs> and the framer couldn't get, you know, the, the molding, he couldn't get the mats for Sunflower Fairy, like everything shut down. <laughs> and um, So he had her for like 
months. Um, this framer in particular that I use, who's local to me, um, usually has, I think, a very quick turnaround. Um, but this one, this one took time <laughs> because of COVID. So yeah, I, I started her back like pre-2008 and then just finished her up in 2020. Basically, I, I think I picked her up again like at the very beginning of 2020 and just plowed through her. And what stymied me or got me to stop back in the day was these flowers. If you watched my last floss tube, you saw that I stitched May's Emerald Fairy. And with May's Emerald Fairy, the, there's like a, um, I didn't stitch them, but there's um, like a loop of, I think there's strawberries down here, like strawberry plants. Um, I might have that wrong, but I think they're strawberries. Um, and I left them out. Again, like, you know, it was relatively early stitching days for me. I wasn't super confident at finishing things. If there was a design element that I thought you didn't really, that didn't really, um, add to the design necessarily, I had no problem leaving it out. Um, so I know like way back in the day, um, like 2006, 2007, somewhere in there, I made tons of progress on her. I had like almost all the top done, not the like confetti bits in her hair and for the flowers, but I had like, I had, um, I think one whole wing done. I had the other wing done except for like this crinic down here. I had her skin done. I had all the white of the dress done. I had most of this down here done. What I didn't do was the flowers, <laughs> this ring of flowers, because I was thinking there was no way I could stitch them like way back in the day. I was like, that's too much. It makes the design, t like they're beautiful, but that just makes the design bigger than I am capable of finishing. Um, there's like so many color changes in those roses. There's so much confetti. There's all those stems. Like, I don't, I can't do that. Um, but then when I picked the piece back up in, you know, like late 2019 or early 2020, I was like, I can do that. That's no big deal. Um, which was an awesome, it's kind of an awesome change to have gone through. Um, because my other option was to not stitch the flowers, but then I would have to figure out like how to fill in the holes of her dress and that, I, that wouldn't have been easier. Anyway, I love it. I'm glad I did the flowers. I love the way it turned out. Um, the other thing, I don't know if you'll be able to see. Oh yeah, I think you can kind of see. So these beads up in the corners. Um, I don't know if I said before or not. So I, when I bead, I almost always use floss. I will typically, like sometimes I'll go searching for a new DMC, but typically I will use a floss color that is already pulled for the design. I, um, I don't work for my master set. I pull the, all the flosses I'll need for a design. And that's just how I'm like, careful with dye lot issues and stuff and I will use like I keep them usually on a floss ring in the floss away bags and I will um I will when it's time to bead I'll look at the bead color I'll find usually a um DMC color that either matches or like coordinates or I feel like enhances the the color of the bead and I bead with that um again see I I'm, I do a lot of things that might be a little unusual um, I like the way it looks, um, better to use DMC. Um, I don't, I know some people don't like that you can see the floss. I don't mind at all. Um, sometimes I actually really like it. I feel like it can look really cool, like really good. Um, also I keep reminding myself, nobody is looking at these from like an inch away. People are usually seeing them from like several feet away across the room. And so what they're getting is an overall effect of the floss behind the bead. They're not, it's not reading to the eye as like two separate colors. Um, so I like, I like beading with the DMC. I like the way it looks. So that's what I do. Um, I do not like using the invisible, um, 
the Invisible Thread. I've tried them. I hate them. I just hate the way they feel. They're, I love beading with a cotton or a silk floss. I hate beading with Invisible, um, the Invisible Floss. I just don't like, uh, or the Invisible Thread. I don't like the way it feels. It kind of ruins the enjoyment for me, so I don't do it. But on this piece, I had a little bit of a conundrum because of all of this. So this is stitched on Wishel. I believe it's Water Lily is the color, which is a very light and thin, like open weave fabric. Um, I love the way the fabric looks. I think it's beautiful. Um, but when it came to like stitching down all of those beads and butterflies, and there's like tons of them, and what else are they coming down from the wand? Um, any floss I used was going to show behind. So, but I really didn't want to use the invisible. I have some of the invisible. I have actually a few different kinds, mostly for my, my quilting classes and things. Um, I really didn't want to use any of them. I also worry about them stretching over time because I know they can stretch and I don't want the beads to end up like hanging. Anyway, um, I was actually very proud of myself. I came up with what I felt was a very good idea to, although I'm sure other people have done this before too, I actually took strands of the fabric from the edge and I used those to do the beading in this area and down here. And I think from like when it's hanging on the wall, it probably looks fine, but I know, especially if I get up really close, you can see the floss like behind a little bit it's actually a little bit more visible in person than than what you can see on camera I think but um it's not bad <laughs> but um I actually think what I would do if I was in this situation again or the next time I'm in this situation is um I have silk thread that um I use for applique um if any of you are quilters or do a lot of applique work you may also do this. It's a common applique technique. If you're doing needle turn applique, you know, where you want your stitches to be invisible, you use like a light gray. Instead of having to color match your thread for each applique piece, a lot of people just use like a light gray silk thread that's really thin um, and it just blends into everything. Like it essentially becomes invisible when you're done. Um, next time I'm in this situation, I think I'm going to try that and see if that does a better job. Because, I mean, I could, obviously, it's the, like, I used a strand of the fabric to attach these beads. You couldn't, like, do a better job of matching the fabric. So I'd, I'd have to try something else to, um, to do a better job. I hope y'all don't mind me, like, yammering on and on about my stitch pieces. But... I love that one. Um, so this next one is, I think, my favorite Marabilia of all time. I'm looking, I have a label on the back. I don't know what year I finished this, um, because I, this was before I was signing and dating them, um, but this would have been like prior to the end of 2008 that I finished it. This is Stargazer. She's done on probably the called for fabric. Um, I think it's a, is it a wishel? Oh, it's definitely a wishel. Um, just like natural colored linen. Um, she was stitched as charted except for her hair, which I converted um, to be a redhead, although I'm not thrilled. I've never been thrilled with my redhead conversions. Um, Stitch and Mommy shared hers that she's used with me. And um, I think I'm going to try that one the next time I, I do a conversion because I think hers looks a lot better. But um, I love her. Now, she is um, fabric. <laughs> she is stitched on, like I said, kind of at least something similar to the called for fabric. It's very helpful when I get a phone call in the middle of doing this. Um, she's stitched on, on this natural colored fabric. I could not come up with a different fabric option that I was happy with. 
I have seen other stargazers stitched on darker fabrics that look great. But usually those stargazers have also, some element of this has also been converted. And I really love these colors. I wanted to stitch this as, as charted. And I didn't feel, I couldn't, I wasn't confident I could, I had found a fabric that was, that wasn't going to make some of these colors disappear. So I stuck with the called for. Um, I do, I think fabric for this one's just tricky when you're trying to do a hand dyed. Now I actually do want to restitch her someday. Um, I would like to do a conversion and, um, and restitch her and I would do that on a darker fabric. Um, I, I wish I could have found a fabric that made her, that, that looked more like a night sky that, you know, was darker. Um, but still let her and her colors like pop and and really stand out um, But given that I couldn't and honestly today I still couldn't even tell you like a great fabric That I you know thought would think would make her look great that um, That was like that dark night sky effect um, unless you convert part of her um, So given all that I'm very happy with how she turned out She's a very special piece to my husband and I because I stitched her, I, I used to travel a lot for work, and um, so a lot of my pieces were stitched, back then were stitched in like hotel rooms and stuff. Um, this one was stitched, I made sure to only stitch it when my husband and I were hanging out. So however many like hundreds of hours <laughs> go into one of these things, I've never actually clocked myself. I just sort of estimated, you know, people tend to say like 150 or so hours for a Mirabilia. Um, all those hours were spent, you know, enjoyably in my husband's company. So um, it feels a little bit like a souvenir, a little bit extra special to us. So those are all of the finishes that I wanted to show you. Um, or all of the like previously finished items. Um, so now I'm gonna show you, I just brought up, this morning I literally was thinking like, I don't have that much for a floss tube. <laughs> like there's not that many stitch pieces in my bedroom. I don't know what I'm gonna talk about. And then I started like gathering the things I've worked on <laughs> in the last couple of weeks. And there's tons. <laughs> so. I don't know what I was thinking, but there, there's, there's a lot here. But I'm just trying to keep this a little bit shorter than last time. Um, so the first thing I wanted to show you is from this kit. It's a Riolis kit that I'm confident I just ordered from 123 Stitch. Um, I don't stitch a lot of small items, but um, I did stitch him up really fast. Right on him. This was just a few nights of like hanging out with my husband and watching movies. I did omit the the pattern has like um, like some stars in the background. I omitted those. I'm actually I want to finish this into like a little pin cushion. Um, so yeah, finished that. That was pretty quick and easy. And then I also finished um, Country Cottage Needleworks. It's called Frozen Hot Chocolate Stand, or Frozen Hot Chocolate Shop. Frozen Hot Chocolate Shop. I finished that. Um, and I, cha I changed I changed the lettering. Um, I, I told the story last time about my son and his cold cocoa. So I, um, I changed it to Logan's Cold Cocoa. Um, just to, to make it a little more personal for us. And that I actually am going to get framed, even though it's a small piece. Um, I have a, a number of small pieces, um, like little vignettes, little areas where things are hanging in my kitchen and dining room area. So I'm going to get this framed and hang it up somewhere in there. Um, okay, so most of the things I have to show you are whoops I haven't shown before because I'm in this like new area of my bedroom. 
but I'm going to start with one that I did show last week. This is, please pardon me while I'm slow, I'm still getting used to like how to do this floss tube thing and remembering to show pictures of the finished item. This is um, Teresa Wensler's The Princess and the Dragon, which I have the kit for. And this is where, I'm not going to take it out of the Q-snap because this is, everything I worked on is, is visible here. I'm actually thrilled with this. This part of the wing is like all filled in. I think that's amazing. <laughs> I've never like gotten this far on a Teresa Wensler before because I do tend to like jump around and like stitch all over the place. I've never gotten to a point where I had like a section that solidly stitched and filled in. It's really excited. Um, so yeah, I did this in the wing and I think extended that down there. Um, and I did a little bit more like up in this yellow and then I started working on, on the border a little bit. Part of the border is beaded and needs to wait. Well, for me, we'll need to wait until the end. I beat at the end and I, I am enjoying stitching this in a cue snap. So that's Princess and the Dragon, and I am going to continue to kind of focus on that, hopefully until it's done, which could be a year from now. Um, but honestly, I'm hoping to see it like getting kind of close by the end of 2021, if I can. Um, and I don't stitch on it every day. I'm not in the mood for it every day. Teresa Wensler's take like a lot of energy, and um, for me at least, and um, I just don't have it in me every day to like focus that much on it. Um, but still, if I could pick it up a couple times a week and, and put in a few, you know, strands each time, I think, you know, I'll, I'll keep getting progress on it and maybe eventually it'll, it'll get done because I'd love to have it actually hanging up. Um, so this next one I have been working on, well, I started it. 2008 um, and this is Evangeline by um, Lavender and Lace um, this is one of my one of the Lavender and Lace pieces I like the most it um, probably partly because it depicts a storm and I I love storms um, it's very see-through though what can I hold behind We'll try this. That's better. Um, this is as far as I've gotten. Um, most of this was most of what you see was already done, um, like prior to 2008. Um, I picked this up again this past year and put a few more strands on um, during the day when when I was helping my kids with school. Um, so I haven't really focused on it, but it's gotten some attention this past year. And I do, I love this piece. Um, I, I would like to get back to it um, here in the next couple of years. Like, hopefully actually make it a focus at some point here in the next um, next couple of years and, and see that done. Um, I also, I showed this last time. This is Moonlight Lullaby by Marabilia. And, oh, I gotta move the chart so you can see it. Um, I did make some more progress on this since last time. Um, I worked on that border. Sorry, I've got floss hanging. Um, got some more wings and dress done. Part of the, the blanket the, the baby's wrapped in. Some of her skin and hair. Um, I want to keep making consistent progress on that. Um, because it is for my mother-in-law. I'm turning it into a birth sampler for my mother-in-law to have of my daughter. Um, so I, I, I'd, I'd really love to see that done maybe by the middle of next year. And um, so I can give it to her. My mother-in-law said she's happy to, to get it framed um, if I can just stitch it. <laughs> um, so the next thing... <laughs> there's no reason for me to make plans because I never stick to them. <laughs> I always end up stitching whatever is calling to me the loudest. And 
sometimes the thing calling to me the loudest makes no sense. Like, you would think, or I would think, that the things calling to me the loudest would be, like, my favorite pieces. It doesn't work that way for me. Like, sometimes I can love the way a piece looks, and I really want to finish it so I can have it on my wall. But I don't often get in the mood to stitch it. Well, this is a piece that I like, certainly. Um, but it's not my favorite Marabilia. But it was, like, screaming at me last week that I had to stitch on it. So that's what I did. Um, this is Florentina by Marabilia. I have no idea, like, I have no idea why this one was shouting at me so loud. Um, I, um, I'm going to keep it in the, the Q-snap because there's not that much progress on it. Um, it's another clay by Kim Needleminder. Um, this is kind of middle of her dress. Like, this is, I think, going up her bodice a little bit. These are some of the leaves trailing down, and, and this is going down the front of her dress, um, like around her waist. Um, this fabric is not showing up great on here. Uh, kind of. So it's getting a little washed out. I think the, ooh, that's kind of what the fabric looks like. Um, I think the fabric <laughs> this is part of why it was screaming stitch me. This, I tend to not choose fabrics that are quite this bright. This is a color and cotton fabric of the month. Um, I'm in their, their fabric of the month club thing. Um, I tend not to stitch on things quite this bright. Um, I tend to pick like more, generally more muted. I like color, but like usually more muted color. This is just so bright and cheerful and I, and I love the color of it. I think that's why it was screaming at me. Um, it looks better on camera. Um, when I started stitching, I was a little worried about this color here, maybe blending into the fabric a little, much, a little too much. This is definitely blue and this is definitely a purple, but in person, especially when there's like fewer stitches, I'm, I'm not sure if they're going to get lost a little bit, but I think if they do, it's only going to be a little bit. I, I considered scrapping this fabric choice for it but um and I'm sorry I don't know which color and cotton it is um because I don't have the label anymore um but I decided to stick with it because it just makes me happy also um I think if I at the end if I feel like it is blending a little too much I can backstitch around um her dress in a darker shade of this purple and make it stand out a little bit more um Midsummer Night's Fairy is like that. It's back stitched um, with a darker shade of blue. So she, I stitched my Midsummer Night's Fairy on a blue fabric. She has a blue dress, but it's back stitched in that blue and it looks great. So that's my plan for that one. And I'm just having fun with it right now. So I suspect that she's gonna get some more attention here in, um, in the coming weeks. Okay, this next one is, um, Autumn Lane Stitcheries Stitch Along, the Dark Queen of the Sea. So, I basically gave up on this one, <laughs> like, months ago. I am going to get back to it. It's not a, like, forever being put away. Um, but I did, I did end up, uh, basically giving up on it for a while. So, this is as far as I got. this so you can see it better and this is a fabric that I dyed myself it's actually a um, I believe it's a Lugana that um, 123 stitch sent me by accident when I had ordered linen um, but I, I decided to just play with it anyway and see what would happen so I was going strong I was caught up <laughs> for a few months there um, I didn't stitch the color underneath these fish because I didn't like the gray that was in there, but I felt like I needed to see the rest of it stitched before deciding what color would look good at the bottom of the fish. Um, but what happened um, was I got a little bit behind in her bodice, and then some of the parts that came out, like for his, her face and her hair, where you had to make decisions, I couldn't make a decision. 
I just, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And my husband for Christmas even bought me the like, the extra like hair pack. I still don't know what color hair I want to do her with. And I felt like I couldn't make that decision without seeing the rest of the piece. And then some other parts came out that I was like, eh, a little iffy about. Um, like there's uh, these like kind of triangular um, pieces in the corner to kind of like frame it in that I know some people didn't care for as much. I didn't care for them particularly, but again, I didn't know if I was going to want to stitch them or not. I felt like until the piece was done. Now that I've seen the whole piece, I'm definitely not stitching those corner pieces. I don't care for them. Um, I just get, I reached the point where I felt like I was being confronted with a whole lot of decisions that needed to be made. And I didn't have enough information to make those decisions because I didn't know what the rest of the piece looked like. So now that the whole piece is out, I think the last part came out um, August 1st. I should say today is August 24th, 2021. Um, now that um, everything's been released, I can get back to her. Um, but what's happened is like in the meantime, I've just like lost motivation on her. So she's going to be set aside probably still for a little bit, although now like getting her out and looking at her, I'm like, I should get back to her. Um, I will probably work on her a little bit like off and on as time goes and she'll get, she'll get done when she gets done. I'm not, not in a rush. At the at start of the whole thing, I was so gung ho. I was going to keep up with it the whole time and have it done, you know, by the end of this August, um, but all that being said, I think I made the right decision to back off when um, I started feeling like I needed more information in order to make the decisions that need to be made with her. Because there's like the two different face options and um, the, I think there's an option for like what she's holding in her hand, like a skull or a ball of magic and all the hair. And I think I made the right decision to hold off. Um there's so much here. Um, this is another piece I pulled recently because I'd like to get back to it. This is Fairy Flora by Marabilia. I have almost nothing done on it and I stitched what is done on it. God, I don't even know which, I don't even know which side goes up. This is also from a kit and I'm going to I think she maybe goes this way. There's really almost nothing done um, on her. Um, but she's always been one of my favorites. And Crossed by Floss, um, if you are familiar with her channel, she's been stitching her and uh, kind of just inspired me to bring her back out. <laughs> um, usually the way things work for my stitching is I have hundreds of whips and even more kitted up projects. Most of them are put away in a trunk or in drawers and things. Those pieces aren't likely to get much attention. Um, a couple of dozen of them are left out um, in my like stitchy spots and stitchy nooks and those are the pieces that are most likely to get attention. And I go in periodically and move things around. I might pack something away for a while and, and bring some new things out. Um, but it's the things that are out that are mo most likely to get stitched on. And this had been packed away. So I, again, inspired by, by Cross by Floss, decided I needed to get this one out <laughs> and have it in my stitchy spot so it's more likely it's actually going to get stitched on. Um, I just wanted to mention real quickly too, project bags. I use lots of different things for project bags. Um, this one is by the 805 Stitcher. This is what my um, Dark Queen of the Sea is in. This is one I made myself. It's just a very simple zipped bag um, that's big enough to, to hold my 11, 11, 11 by 11 Q-snaps. Um, I don't know if I've, sh I think I've showed this kind before. That's a simple drawstring bag that I make myself. This is probably my favorite, honestly. Um, I can keep stitching or knitting or hand quilting or applique projects in these 
make them in any size I want very easily. I love those. This, some of you might recognize, um, this is the bag that um, sheets come in at Target. So if you buy sheets at Target, at least most of the brands they sell, I think, if not all of them, come in like a bag. <laughs> and I'm guessing most people throw those away. <laughs> but I saw it and was like, project bag? <laughs> I can't be the only one who does that, right? Um, what I did this to a bunch of them. I um, just added buttonholes and sewed buttons on. And I think, um, like some of them have Velcro, and I don't like Velcro near my cross stitch. So um, I just take off the Velcro, and I know some of them, like I had to like, um, I had to pop off the Velcro and maybe like rehem something to like finish it neatly. Uh, but I have a bunch of these from buying Target sheets, and I, I like using them as project bags. Um, this is another one that I've got a whip in. Um, they're not my favorite project bags, but honestly they were fun and they work fine for, for my purposes. So this next one is one I really want to get back to. It's, it's like screaming at me to work on her. Um, this is by Passione Ricamo. Again, I apologize if I'm butchering that, the name of the designer. Um, it's called Romantic Stitcher. I don't, as far as I know, she does not still sell the paper copies of her patterns. Um, every once in a while I run into one on a website um, that's for sale, but I think that's like old, like an old stock. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but you might still find some here and there. But I don't know if all of her designs are available from her website as PDFs, but certainly most of them are. Um, so if you like this, I know you can just Google the Passione Ricamo. Um, I know you can you can download these from her website. And I, I love this one. Um, she's nowhere near done. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have floss like hanging everywhere. And she's very see-through. Actually, she's kind of got more done on her than I thought. Um, so this, for a very long time, was what I called my sick day project. Let's see what she's supposed to look like. Um, I kept this, the reason, so, the reason I called her my sick day project was I liked having a project that had lots of large blocks of color that was relatively easy, relaxing stitching, um, so that if I wasn't feeling well, like literally, like if I was taking a sick day and didn't feel up to stitching on something more complicated, that I would, um, that I would be comfortable and happy to take out and stitch on. Um, I love the embroidery hoop that she's holding. Um, so this came, I mean, most of the stitching was done <laughs> literally on days that I was sick, um, you know, and couldn't go to work or whatever. Um, back like, between 2005 and 2010 probably. So this was my sick day project basically until I had kids. Because I, I don't know what other mom's experiences are, but I found that having a sick day as a mom is very different than having a sick day when you are not a mom. Um, so now when I'm sick, I don't get to just sit around and stitch. I'm still taking care of people or like power napping desperately trying to get better so I can like get back in the fray. Um, this is something else I use as a project bag. These are the um, Love You More. I like these for some things but not for everything. Um, I do fit Marabilia's in here but obviously like they're not super secure. Stuff can fall out so I don't like go traveling with these. Um, this piece is, oh what's it called? one. Please pardon me while I find its name. It is Elizabeth. I wanted to say that, but it didn't sound right. This is Elizabeth by Marabilia. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen this. Um, 
I decided this year I wanted to learn how to stitch using the sewing method. And I have become a huge fan of the sewing method if I'm using one strand. If I'm using two strands, my stitching looks awful using the sewing method. I am extremely unhappy with, um, with the outcome. But I thought, you know what, if I can stitch an entire marabilia using the sewing method, I bet my X's will look pretty good by the end of it. So that's what Elizabeth is for me. This is my, um, sorry, it's super wrinkly. I'm doing it, um, since I'm using a sewing method, this is being stitched in hand, and I roll it up from the side when I'm stitching in hand. Um, so you can see I've jumped around a lot. Um, I also did frog the first probably 100 stitches I did because they were so epically bad um, before getting back to it. Um, I, I just, I've, I've been like, this is like a practice piece. Um, and I know some of you might be thinking, why are you practicing on a Marabilia? <laughs> like, why don't you get something small to work on? Um, and that's just because that's not me. Like, I, I thought about, I genuinely thought about, like, doing some small pieces. Um, a lot of the small pieces I do, though, um, are more primitive and I'm more likely to do with, like, the one strand on a 36 count or a 40 count. Um, even if I'm just practicing, I'd rather be working on a Marabilia most of the time. So I, I picked a Marabilia. Honestly, I picked one that's not my favorite. I like it, but it's not my favorite Marabilia. I can live with the X's not being awful. Certainly, once I'm done, even if the X's are trash, no one's going to know from, you know, halfway across a room. Um, but yeah, this is my, this is my, like, practice piece. So I started up at, like, the top part of her dress. The reason I went down is because the way I'm kind of settled on doing my sewing method stitches, like the direction I go from and stuff, I thought they might look better working from the bottom up instead of the top down. I don't know. We'll see. This comes out actually pretty frequently. I don't um, tend to stitch on it for large periods of time at a, in a go, but um, I'll just do, you know, a handful of stitches here and there, and it's certainly, sewing method is certainly way faster if I ever do decide I like the way um, my X's look, I think that'll that'll be a great way to get some more projects done. Excuse me a moment while I get a sip of water. My throat gets so dry doing this much talking. Um, okay, this one, I can find the picture, is a realist kit I started for my daughter. It's called Magic Owl. Um, of course, reminiscent of Harry Potter, my daughter, who is seven, is a huge Harry Potter fan. We haven't made it to the end of the books yet. I mean, I have, but, you know, she hasn't. Um, so she, she still doesn't know how it ends. Um, but she loves it. Totally obsessed. So I saw this and, and wanted to do it for her. It also comes with the wool threads, um, which I hadn't used before and I thought would be interesting to, um, to work with. I was actually putting some stitches in on this the other night. So this is where I am so far. I'm just up in the top left corner. Um, I enjoy the wool threads, but certainly they, uh, I have to use shorter lengths. They get like fuzzier and start to kind of, excuse me, like disintegrate a little bit faster. So, um, use kind of shorter lengths on it. Um, and it, it, I am doing it on the Ada. I'm stitching this in hand. Um, I, I'm, I'm a linen stitcher. I love linen the best, but some of these kits and they come with Ada, especially if like, you know, the, the colors of floss are chosen, um, to like blend with that fabric as the background. I don't mind using the Ada. I'll do it. So that's that one. This is a piece that was my travel piece for a long time, and it's been shouting at me lately, so I picked it up the other day um, and was working on it. This is Garden Muses by Marabilia. 
Um, and for those of you who are wondering, I have had some questions about how I organize and how I store things. And I'll try to go into that in more detail in a future floss tube. Um, but this, for each of my projects, it's an actual whip or if it's kitted up, I use the floss away bags. Um, I have tons of these things. Um, but they do get reused, you know, when I'm done with, uh, when I'm done with the project, all of the flosses go back in with like my master set of floss. And then I just reuse the ring and the backs. I have to keep stuff together or it will get lost. And I know the fabric for this one. This is olive green cashel linen. And I got it from Cross Stitcher's Ark in Macon, Georgia. Um, I don't know if they're even still around. I used to live in the South and travel for work and I used to visit that cross stitch shop and liked it a great deal, but I don't even know if they're still around. So this is as far as I've gotten on this one. I'm going to show the whole thing. I need to get one of those boards, don't I? So I can show things more easily. So this is the hair of the, the muse on the left, and this is some of the greenery that's coming off the, the frame of the piece, and these are like the topiaries going down to the statuary at the, the center. So she, she hasn't gotten a lot of work on. She's been packed up and been a whip for probably five years or so. Um, I used to work on her when we traveled to visit grandparents in the summer, she was a piece that would get some work on it. Um, we haven't done that for a couple of years because of COVID. Um, but like I said the other day, she was calling my name, so I got her out. Um, this next one, I don't have the, the picture with me, but this is Marabilia's Queen of Freedom. I showed you, um, oh, the Statue of Liberty one. Why am I blanking on her name? Well, this is Queen of Liberty. Um, I believe. Now I'm even questioning that. This is the other Marabellia. This is the, the queen style one that um, has the flag draped over her lap. Um, or like the, you know, with the dress that that uh, makes her look like, like the flag. And she's got like the, the crown on. Um, I have not gotten very far on this. This just like um, Lady of the Flag. Lady of the Flag is the other one. Um, just like Lady of the Flag, this got started right after the, the January 6th riot at the Capitol. I was so angry. Um, oh, so angry. Uh, yeah, so I started the two patriotic marabillias uh, that honestly, like it helped. It helped me like sitting there stitching her head and her face and like working through my feelings on what was going on. It actually, it really did help. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned skin. I do not, do, I do my skin over two, two over two. Um, unless it's charted differently, like some Teresa Wensler's, um, have, have the figures, the human figures charted for one over one. I'll do those one over one. Um, the uh, Evangeline, the the lady, Lavender and Lace piece I showed earlier, and I think several of the Lavender and Laces come with options. You can stitch them over one or over two. I will stitch them over two. Um, in general, I prefer the way skin looks two over two. For my eye, and I, I own a couple of pieces that were stitched by somebody else where the skin is one over one, especially lavender and lace pieces. Um, for my eye, it like it interrupts what I'm looking at. It, it's like there's a difference in focus, and I don't care for it. Um, it, 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 it really draws my eye when the skin is one over one in a way that like interrupt like it like it like my brain can't figure out what it's looking at like it's looking at a picture that's part of it's in focus and part of it's not in focus or something um and I don't really care for it so I stitch I stitch mine two over two again those of you who do a one over one 
awesome, more power to you. Um, it's just not what I'm usually going to choose. This one's not a Mirabilly. I think I'm, I'm done with Mirabilly's for today. Um, this is something I picked up the other night when I was tired and I wanted to stitch, but I didn't really have a lot of energy to be stitching. Um, this is Hocus Pocus from Waxing Moon Designs, and I didn't get very far, but that's okay. This is where I am so far. And I'm not doing this with a called for floss. I have become like obsessed with trying different flosses. I love trying different companies' fabrics, different flosses. I just like trying, trying new and different things. So I've been like, since the pandemic, collecting, for lack of a better word, different companies like overdyed flosses and things. And, and I like, I like using all of one fabric, all of one company's product. Like if I'm going to use color and cotton floss, I want to use all color and cotton floss. There's no good reason for that. It's just my brain just likes it that way. So I had ordered a bunch of um, Fiberlicious floss and I am, I've converted this to some of these colors, some of these Fiberlicious colors. I just love the way a good ring of floss I just love this. It just, like, how can that not make you happy? Just to see a lovely ring of beautiful, beautiful colors. I just love it. They make me happy. They cheer me up on bad days. So I'm having tons of fun converting that piece to these Fiberlicious um, flosses. And enjoying doing that. Um, the last couple of whips I have to show you are Teresa Wensler's. This one is The Guardian, which is one of my favorite of her pieces. I love this dragon. I love that you don't know why that dragon's there. I know the piece is called The Guardian, but what's he guarding? Is he guarding the people in the castle? Is he guarding the family of dragons? that lives or the group of dragons that live in those on those cliffs from the people in the castle like what's he doing there and what's he actually guarding i love this piece i clearly spent way too much time thinking about it um but this is where i am so far which is not that far but i did i know i've mentioned i like to frame out the pieces this is stitched on um antique white monaco um now when I'm doing a Teresa Wensler for these borders, I tend to go down crossing every, t like to count. I'll just um, do nine half stitches and then a full cross and then nine half stitches and then a full cross. And that's how I kind of count these long distances. Um, but this one was another thing, I guess it's kind of like gridding. I did something different. I just um, wove this in there every 10. So it's like under for 10 and over for 10. So I'm not, there's, I would never grit a whole piece. I'm way too lazy for that. I can't believe that some of you actually have like the patience to do that. I'm, I'm astonished and amazed. More power to y'all. I, I would never do it. Um, but this I could handle <laughs> just doing basically one grid line down and one grid line over. Um, so that's how, that's how I handle counting for this one. And I've got part of the sky and a little bit of the dragon's wing started there. And, um, when I'm, once I'm done with the princess and the dragon, um, I want to, I want this to basically take its place as a Teresa Wensler focus. I'll still be working on, um, Woodland Fairy from Teresa Wensler pretty frequently. Um, but this would be my, like, not such a hard Teresa Wensler piece. It would take its place. Um, and then this is the Trace Wensler that I have that's probably, well, I was going to say that's closest to a finish. Princess and the Dragon might be kind of um, up there with it at this point, though. So this is Castle Sampler. Um, it comes, it, it came in lots of different printings and leaflets and things. I would imagine this one probably is in Patterns Online because there's no dragon involved. Um, so this is where I am so far. 
and I've worked on lots of lots of framing the piece out. Got a few strands of floss hanging off there. I was pretty gung ho on this for a while and got quite a lot of it done, and then it kind of got set aside. Um, but this is also kind of up there um, in like what's what's in the forefront of my mind once I can get hopefully Princess and the Dragon done. So those are all the whips I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you one more thing. I kind of lost my mind last week. I got in a Christmas mood. Now, I don't usually get in a Christmas mood. I like Christmas just fine, um, but I'm not like a huge Christmas stitcher. Um, and I, I'm not usually in a Christmas mood when it's not Christmas. I don't know what happened. I basically was like, I need, I need some, like I need a good Christmas piece. Um, usually the Christmas pieces I've done are like tiny because I don't get in much of a Christmas mood. So I'll do something small. Um, if the mood does strike, well, I decided I needed like a big Christmas piece. Um, something really amazing. So I, I lost my mind. I did. I bought each of the 12 days of Christmas from Nora Corbett, which are pieces I've always liked, but I've always been like, but I'm not a Christmas stitcher. Why would I get them? So I'd never gotten them. Um, I ordered them. I also get very paranoid. Things are going to go out of print. I tend to think I'm not going to want something and then it goes out of print. And then five years later, I'm like, oh, I love that. I should have gotten it. I'm like that with Madonna of the Garden. That's the only unicorn chart I really have right now is Mirabilia's Madonna of the Garden. Um, it is stunningly beautiful. And I passed it up so many times back when it was still in print. Um, I was busy collecting like the fairies, mostly the fairies and the pretty ladies. And I always liked Madonna of the Garden but it, it, you know, but I, I was going to go for the fairies and stuff first. And my interest in that piece has grown considerably. Now, just, just the color usage in that is so stunningly beautiful. And of course, it's like totally out of print. I can't even find it on the secondary market. So Madonna the Garden is, is now my unicorn. But anyway, I got the 12 Days of Christmas. Um, I am planning on starting this here in the coming weeks. Um, I do hoard fabric. So I have, um, I have some fat halves, mostly from color and cotton that are in like relatively neutral. I'm, I'm going to have to do it on a neutral background, I think, or I'm going to, um, I need to pick one and I need to pull floss for it. Um, but in case you aren't familiar, I'll go through them. This one, of course I can't read the back cause it's covered. This one's the partridge in a pear tree. This one's two turtle doves, three French hens, four calling birds, five golden rings, six geese a laying, seven swans a swimming, eight maids a milking, which I've always particularly liked this one. Nine ladies dancing, ten lords a leaping, eleven pipers piping, and twelve drummers drumming. So what I decided is that I'm going to stitch these all on one massive piece of fabric. Um, I made working copies this time because I'm not, I know I said last time like I'm not above buying two copies of Amirabilia so I can st stitch from the original chart and still have one to collect. I'm not doing that for 12 of them. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I worked out how I'm going to do this. I'm going to do them in a four by three grid. I wrote down all their dimensions. I figured out the math. I need a fat half to fit all of them on with a comfortable margin. I made my supply list. Um, I'll have to pull the flosses. These are the Crinex. So, and these are the Mill Hills 
and those are the water lilies. So here's what I decided to do for those. I ordered the water lilies, which I feel like miraculously were all in stock at 123 Stitch and I could get. I ordered the water lilies. I ordered the few Krynix that were actually in stock. I am not going to order these. Um, I know I have a bunch of these left over from other um, designs. I'm going to use as much as I can. I'm going to use leftover beads. Now this is like probably a 20 year project. This is not something that's going to be like completed anytime soon. This I'm envisioning is going to be a project that when that like Christmas bug strikes, I can pull it out and I can work on it some. If I really want to feel like I, I'm finishing something, I could like complete one of the, the smaller designs. Um, so this could take ages to actually complete. Um, and over that time, I'm only going to end up with like more and more leftover beads from other Marabilias and projects that I'm finishing. So I might, I probably will end up subbing out certain beads. Like I said, a lot of the beads, I know I have like nearly full packs left over from other projects. I may as well use those. I also have like a stash of, of Delicas that I bought basically just cause, <laughs> cause they were pretty and it's COVID <laughs> and I can't be the only one who's done a lot more shopping during COVID. Um, I hope I'm not the only one. I don't think I am. Um, so anyway, I have, I have beads in the house to pull from. I don't even want to try to like buy all of those. Um, the Krynix, like I said, I ordered, I'm sure you guys are aware. It's kind of hard to get a lot of Krynix right now. Um, I, uh, I ordered those that they did have. I'm not really concerned about getting all of them because I feel like that's a pretty easy thing to sub out to as I go. And I, I do Krynic at the end anyway, so I'm not, um, I'm not real concerned about, about making sure I have all those. So that's a project I'm really, really excited about. Um, I think that's going to be super fun and I'm excited to, to pick my fabric and pull my floss and at least put a few stitches in and, and get it started. All of the, um, all of the 12 designs are approximately the same size. One of them is like a lot bigger. Like a lot of them are like 110 ish stitches tall. And then one of them is like 123 or something, which was like, was a lot, you know, a lot of them are like 109, 111, 110, 109. And then there's like 121 or 123 or something. Um, but that's okay. I, I think I figured out a way that they're going to look nice. So I'm excited. I'm excited to get started on that. <sighs> this video is really long. I don't know if that's a good thing, but <laughs> I maybe shouldn't have pulled so many of my whips, but this is what happens. I stitched on something different like every day. Um, thank you to those of you who have been watching and commenting. It's really fun to get like a notification that I have like a comment and to like talk to another stitcher because I don't have any stitchers near me that um, I get to get together with, um, you know, that I know. So anyway, thanks guys. Thanks for, for all that. If you have any questions, let me know. And for those of you who mentioned wanting to see more of my organization, um, I am trying to figure out how best to do that um, in terms of like how I actually store my flosses and things. Um, and I've also had some requests to show uh, some of my quilting. So I do have plans to, to do some of that um, in some of my future floss tubes, but I will do it at the end uh, if I'm doing that kind of like how Pumpkin Hollow Quilts does it, so that if people who aren't interested, they don't have to, to stay to, to watch the quilting. So, yeah, thanks again. And, um, you know, if, if I missed any comments, I tried to respond to everybody, but if I missed any, just comment again, let me know. And um, thanks, guys. I hope you have fun stitching, and hopefully I'll come back in a couple weeks to show another room or two full of you know, finished items that are up on the walls. And, um, hopefully I'll be able to show you progress on some of my projects, especially, um, Princess and the Dragon and Moonlight Lullaby. I really want to keep those two, those two moving so that I can get them done sooner rather than later. All right. Have fun stitching. Thanks guys.